everybody, my name is Yuri. Welcome to Zermatory Shipping. The course is about basics of shipping industry. I will explain how the scenes work. In this course, we will cover how the business is arranged, geography of maritime and commercial work, and some legal aspects of the industry. Let's get started. In the first lecture, we are going to speak about geography of shipping industry. Okay, a couple of words about oceans and seas. So, on the Earth there are 73 seas and 5 oceans, and about 70% of the surface is covered by water, and it's logical that 90% of all goods are transferred by sea. Most probably everybody saw straight vertical and horizontal lines on the map. Let's speak a bit about how marinas identify their position anywhere on Earth. Lines that are running from east to west are called parallels of latitude and lines that are running from North Pole to South Pole are called meridians of longitude. There are 360 meridians of longitude, each one is being reared to a certain degree. Each degree is subdivided into 60 minutes and each minute into 60 seconds. Refer now to the map and find a line cutting England from north to south. This line is 0 degree of longitude and uh, it's called Greenwich Meridian. There are 180 parallels and also same as with meridians, each one being reared to a degree. Each degree is subdivided into 60 minutes and each minute into 60 seconds. The Earth revolves on its axis once every 24 hours and thus the apparent movement of the Sun in one hour will be 15 degrees of longitude. There is so-called international date line. If you cross this line from east to west, the date is put back. But if you cross it in reverse direction, a day is apparently lost. Parallels of latitude serve also for another purpose. Because distance at sea are measured in nautical miles, one nautical mile equal one minute of latitude. So, if you travel 60 miles from north to south, your latitude will be changed only by one degree. Accordingly, speed at sea is measured in knots, one knot equal one nautical mile per hour. Because the Earth is a sphere, depicting it on a flat page makes it a lot of problem. There are several examples of solutions to this problem, known as projections. The projection you are most likely to encounter in shipping business is Mercata projection. Mercata projection is based on the idea of wrapping a cylinder of paper around the globe and projecting an image of the world on it. Couple of words about time. Most times on charts use noon on the Greenwich Meridian as datum. This is known as Greenwich Meridian Time, or GMT. Time zones and clock change are important consideration for those who are in shipping business, particularly when communicating with the time limits that are essential part of the work. For example, the New York shipping market is 5 hours later than the London market. A London broker wishing to discuss market information with a colleague in New York should wait for a few hours after getting into the office. Or, for example, when superintendent from office uh, want to go to the ship's captain, he should check in which time zone ship currently operates. On this slide, I'm going to say a couple of words about tides. The rise and fall of tides is important in shipping. Tides rise and fall because of the moon's gravity works in conjunction with the Earth's own gravity. In most places in the world there are two high tides and two low tides every day. Currents. Fast currents can cause particular problems in estuaries, which are wide entrance to rivers. Currents are also flow through narrow gaps between pieces of lands. Other factors also play their part in creation of ocean currents and all can affect navigation. But the subject has been very researched and reference books tell seafarers what currents to expect in any part of the world. Wind and weather. The weather is the least predictable of elements and even so modern ships are not dependent on the wind as sailing ships were, it remains an important factor in shipping. Very high winds and rough sea conditions are still responsible for delays, damage and textual loss of ships, particularly severe tropical storms. Ice. In some parts of the world, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere, ships are at risk of being trapped in sea ice. Particular problems are found in ports where timber is loaded in the Baltic Sea, White Sea and Gulf of Bosnia, and also in ports northwest of Russia. Another vulnerable area is the St. Lawrence River and the whole of the Great Lakes in North America. I'd like to say a couple of words about waterways. Two types of waterways are important in shipping, 
natural waterways such as rivers, estuaries and creeks, and man-made waterways. Natural waterways provide a shelter that ships need when loading and discharging. Ports. Ports from the beginning and end of sea voyage and the interface between the ship and the shore. Even today, ports vary widely in their degree of development and sophistication. Shipping routes. Moving goods by sea or waterways is by far the most economic method of transport in terms of cost per ton carried. It's estimated that over 95% of the world's freight is carried by sea. Shipping is a global business. Of the many raw commodities moved in international trade by sea, four are dominant, and they are crude oil, coal, iron ore, and grain. Also, we will have to put here manufactured goods involved container shipping industry. These are five important trades we will be briefly considered. Coal. Coal is an energy source. Coal is used for power generation as a heat source in industrial process, particularly steel making. Top coal exporters are Indonesia, Australia, former Soviet Union, and North America. Grain. Most grains straight in bulk are destined for human or animal consumption. They include wheat, sorghum, soya, rice, and seeds of crops such as a rape, sunflower, flax, and cotton. The main grain exporters are United States, France, Russia, Ukraine, Argentina, Brazil, Canada, and Australia. Iron ore. Most of the world's metal are produced from smelting mineral ores, such as iron ore, which produces steel ore, bauxite, which produces aluminium. In most cases, the process is carried out at some considerable distances from where it is ore is mined. So the main iron ore exporters are Australia, Brazil, South Africa, Canada, Sweden, Norway, and Mauritania. Crude oil. Crude oil is an extremely important commodity. Plenty of stuff is made from it. Chemical and product industry are based on crude oil. Main crude oil exporters are Saudi Arabia, Russia, Iraq, Canada, United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Iran, Nigeria, Angola, and Norway. Manufactured goods. The trade of manufactured goods follows quite a different route. Here on the map you can see the biggest container ship trade routes. The busiest one is Trans-Pacific Line from China to USA. Thank you very much for your attention. If you like the video, press like button, or if you have any feedback, please write it in the comments, and also feel free to write me directly in LinkedIn. Bye-bye!